Hi, my name is Christian Axelsson and I'm the lead data scientist at Sensitive. I joined Sensitive approximately two years ago with a mission to incorporate advanced analytics, machine learning and AI into EQ. Before I joined Sensitive, I have been working as a data science consultant for many years, working with many different sectors and industries. Now, that's enough about me. Let's dive into the exciting topic of AI within the context of Ugo instead. Ugo is Sensitive's platform, which receives data from a vast number of different sensors and then stores the data and makes it accessible through an API. By gathering, storing and providing structured data from all of your sensors in one platform, Ugo becomes a foundation for advanced analytics and AI in the context of IoT. Moreover, it facilitates service and data pipeline development for service providers agnostic of their organizational size. We at Sensitive have also brought AI into Ego, more specifically in order to detect anomalies within the data and correcting these anomalies. And all of this can be done uh, within Ego itself. Our first case incorporating AI was automatic anomaly detection uh, of sensor data as part of a project with SenseFarm, the Swedish University of Agricultural Sciences and the Swedish Board of Agriculture. The project stemmed from problems with error-prone sensor data due to many different factors. The real problems occurs when trying to make decisions based upon faulty data. Furthermore, the physical correction of sensors are at times both labor and time intensive in order to correct the data once more. Sensitive therefore shows to apply machine learning and AI in order to mitigate these problems. The importance of correct and representative data is not limited to agriculture, but to all who relies on data for their decision making. Hence, providing this ability within UQ to all customers. All data professionals know that the greatest time spent on working with data is always cleaning and tidying the data, hence anomaly detection and correction directly from the data provider, allows the service developers to focus more on developing their services, saving them both time and money. Now let's take a look at the anomaly detection and anomaly correction AI that is facilitated or built into Ugo. So we're going to start off at Ugo 2 where my dear colleague Peter Borman has shared some of his uh, sensors that he has in his house or in his own home. And for demonstrative purposes, we're only going to look at two of these sensors, namely uh, Vodok's room and Amy's room. Both of them are Strips uh, LoRa multi-sensors, hence uh, providing or measuring air temperature, air humidity and the amount of light in, in form of lux. These are updated every 15 minutes and sends its data to EQ. And every time this happens, it's also sending the data to our AI backend, which then sends two data streams to our final uh, account on EQ3 in this case, where one of these streams uh, is the pure sensor values which we can see here and the other stream is uh, has passed through the AI algorithm or the AI backend and uh, additional data is uh, applied or sent with it so in this case the most probable and uh, the most probable range, uh, the threshold of the lower bound and the threshold of the upper bound, as we can see here. 
as well as an estimated value that is very probable according to the model for that specific sensor at that specific time. And of course we also have the received value and the suggested replacement value. Okay, and all of these can then be changed through our demonstrative AI UI. This UI is, has only the purpose of uh, being more explanatory when it comes to what actually happens in in the backend, uh, the AI backend, and how it in, uh, how it actually integrates uh, the sensors from Ugo two to uh, Ugo three and what happens along the way during the process. So, if we log in here, we can see that. We have a value of 26, and if we alter that to something that we are pretty sure is going to be anomalous, let's say 28, for instance, then these 28 degrees centigrades are going to be sent to uh, the AI backend, and it's going to react to that. So if we go back to our account on EQ3 and we look what we have received by the mo module or the model from the module then we can see that it has received a value of 28 degrees centigrade which, it, which is uh, outside of the probable range as we can see here. Hence uh, it suggests that uh, the estimated value should be the replacement instead of uh, the received value. Now we have reached the part of the video where we are going to explain which tasks the AI has and which data it uses in order to make its estimations. The AI has three main tasks. The first of one the first one is to define the anomaly thresholds as well as the most probable value. As can be seen in, um, in the plot, there is a lower and a higher threshold. Lower and a higher. Hence creating an accepting range or acceptable range within or between them. The next task is to check whether the received value is outside of the threshold or not. Like the value in, in this example is outside of the lower threshold, whereas the value in this example is within the acceptable range. If the received value is within the acceptable range, the value is not considered an anomaly. Whereas if the received value is outside of the acceptable range, a replacement value will be suggested. As this value is more likely to be correct than the received value presented in this case. The AI takes three different aspects into account as well. The first of which is to identify the specific sensor. And in this case, the specific sensor is this one, which is Amy's room, which was briefly mentioned in, a pre in previous parts of the same video. The second aspect is taking the historic data into account. The plot shows that they shows the entire time series for this sensor. And we can clearly see that it contains the same uh, that it contains some spikes and some valleys that are highly probable to be anomalies, like this one and this one. The zoomed-in area of the time series is the time window 
that is fed into the AI, hence the previous 24 values. The third and final aspect is taking the relationship between the different time series into account. And as we can see, it's the same time window as presented in the previous slide. All of these aspects are then taken into account in order to discern a specific representation for that specific uh, sensor's behavior. In this specific case, the AI produces independent estimates for each sensor at each specific time, in contrast to a generic algorithmic solution. This AI solution allows the same AI to be agnostic of whether the sensor is placed indoors or outdoors, in a hot climate or in a cold climate, hence allowing for, a for an adaptive and a scalable solution. So, that is uh, a very, very brief uh, demonstration on how the anomaly detection and anomaly correction works in Ugo. Thank you. Bye-bye.